Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Jeff Gerstmann Hall of Fame. I'm Jeff Gerstmann. This is the first installment. Uh, I want to take a, you know, a, may like let's call it like a monthly-ish look at uh, a game that matters to me. This isn't, uh, you know... This isn't the strong. This isn't the the hey, we're gonna do a bunch of fan voting and tell everybody that hey, did you know that Tomb Raider was a game that mattered? No. These games matter to me. In variety of ways, you know, just games that I played a lot of growing up and remember fondly and all this other stuff, games that I think are overlooked and in occasionally you know games that are just like undeniable classics uh you know we'll, we'll we're not trying to be snobbish over here at the hall of fame we're not going to ignore the super mario worlds of the world uh along the way but you know i just um there, I've, I've i've played a lot of games over the decades and um some of them stick out to me in ways that they don't stick out to other people for one reason or another. And, um, and I wanted to just kind of, um, show people some of those games and, and really just have an excuse for me to, to play them a little bit and, and, and talk about them. And, uh, sometimes their, their place in their place in my life, um, among other things. Um, and so the the game we're starting with um is a weird one you know and it's funny because this was a game i locked onto um when i was first kind of saying like oh i should do this kind of hall of fame thing and and look at these games for whatever reason this was the first game that popped into my head and then i went and played a little bit of it i don't want to play too much cuz i want to kind of go in a, a sort of fresh um and in playing it i was like oh i'm awful at this game now was I always awful at this game? What happened? Mm, I don't know. Um, but the game is Rambo First Blood Part 2 for the Sega Master System. Uh, it came out in November of 1986. I don't remember exactly when I first got my Sega Master System. I remember that they were being sold at Costco at that point, And so they were available for relatively Relatively, they were available relatively cheaply. I was at least in junior high. So despite this game originally hitting in 86, I would have been 11 in 86. So um, so I'm going to say I probably didn't encounter it until 88 or 89. Uh, prob I'm going to say probably 88. And the Master System, I was the only person I knew that ever had one. And um, not long after buying one, I was... I found myself a little filled with regret about it because the master system didn't have a ton of amazing games on it at the time. And there was a part in and the, the Nintendo, the eight bit Nintendo, the NES, if you will, was so, so hot at that time that I, I just, I hit this moment where I was like, man, why did I, I had to like beg, I had to beg my mother to let me get this thing. And I should have just tried to get the equivalent, the cash equivalent in Nintendo tapes. Um, because, you know, suddenly you're like, oh, well, I've got a whole new system, but I only have three games for it. And uh, are, are the games good? I don't know. You know, Safari Hunt, Hang On. They're okay. You know, it, it also, I guess I should say, I look back on those games a lot more fondly now than I did then. Um, I appreciate the master system a lot more now when you can kind of take its catalog as a whole. And that's kind of the interesting thing about where we're at, uh, when it comes to looking at old games and going back and playing old games is it's removed from that context of like, well, I've only got two games or, Hey, there aren't that many games out yet. And Nintendo, meanwhile, the third parties are just releasing 10 new games a week or just, you know, just crazy stuff all the time. And so, you know, removed from that context, you get to look at that whole library worldwide in a lot of cases and, and judge it a lot differently. And so I, I think of the master system much more fondly now than I did as a young master system owner. Um, but this, uh, Rambo, let's get into it is, a it's an Akari warriors esque, um, 
commando like, I guess I would say. And here just says Rambo. Despite the box art saying uh, the full name of the game. Uh, and this game came out in Japan as Ashra and had a totally different story. And then at some point, when I guess when they were localizing it, they got a hold of the Rambo license and and were like, well, what if we did a Rambo game? And then we do a couple. Sega, Sega. I mean, I guess I actually did a few over the years if you want to really stretch it out. But there was this and then there was Rambo 3 for the Genesis, which I had completely forgotten about until I was reading up on this game and was like, oh, right, Rambo 3 for the Genesis was totally sick. But this music has been stuck in my head. Uh, for, for like the last two weeks. I've got my little bow and arrow here. You know, Rambo known for explosive arrows. Uh, but I, yeah, the, the, I think the sound effects in this game are really good. Uh, oh, geez. Um, and the movement is really interesting. So let's we'll see if I can show you here. So I can, I can't aim in every single direction. I cannot aim behind me. When you back up, you back up and aim straight forward. So if I, uh, if I'm going backwards in any way, back into the left, back into the right, I can only shoot forward, which seems like a weird hindrance, but actually lets you kind of like line up on a target in a way that you might not be able to otherwise. We need to move forward because these grenades uh, eventually start coming to, you know, make you move forward. Um, and the, that movement of like always being able to shoot forward while you're retreating helps you line up some some angles on enemies that would be a little more difficult to do otherwise. And I don't know that I've seen another game do it quite that way. Of course, now we have more buttons on controllers and it's not really um, a big deal. I got the L. That means I got, I got length now on these bullets, which is a very, you know, uh, Kari Warriors kind of power up. Oh, backed right into that one. All right, we blew up that tank. Okay. This grenade guy's got to go. I guess in the Japanese version, you could only kill the flamethrower guys with a with an arrow. Regular, they were immune to regular bullets, which is crazy. Oh, see, that guy would have thrown a power up out, but I a power up showed up over here. You can only have one power up on screen at the same time. I got screwed there by the timing of all that. Ah, ah, okay, the grenades are weird because they always explode in that uh, you know that kind of four corners diagonal pattern. Oh man, that guy just rushed in and oh come on. It's rough. Okay. This time will be different. Oh, oh these guys. I like how they're clearly like holding rocket launchers, but they just shoot you know, faster, regular bullets. I want to say the question mark can be a number of things, but I feel like generally it is always just killing everyone on the screen. Oh, so these are, what are these? These are like more powerful arrows, I think. You get your power-ups in order, this this L really is a game changer. I 
Yeah, so the, the explosions on those arrows are bigger now. Okay. Now we just have to not die! <sighs> okay. Alright, this is fine. And so, you know, this was an era when you saw a lot of this style of game, obviously, right? You had Commando and, I mean, while, you know, not to spend Rambo's time talking about a competing product, but the NES version of Commando is crazy. Um... It is so much more elaborate than the arcade version in terms of like secret passages and just like weird stuff and gas mask rooms and just like like just really silly stuff that was not anywhere in in the arcade version of the game. I think that's one of one of my favorite things about some of Capcom's early stuff there is I think Capcom was one of the companies early on to realize like hey if we just bring if we just bring the arcade experience home we're selling people games that they'll beat in an hour um and and don't really have necessarily a ton of replayability all right here we go I have to wait, I think. I have to kill a bunch of enemies and then eventually that signal, the, the the sign on the door starts glowing. Is that what it is? Yeah. We did it. And here we get a picture of Rambo doing bow stuff. You know? What more do you want? This is the... This... Uh, yeah, I have... I have had this damn Rambo music st <laughs> stuck in my head. Uh, for... Yeah, at least like the last two weeks. Because I'm like, oh yeah, pretty soon here I gotta play some Rambo. Hell yeah, I'm gonna play some Rambo. And now, I guess the question is, does it live up to that hype? I'm excited to be playing Rambo. Okay. We've got that L. Ugh. Those grenades come quick, too. Like, you, you really are pressured to keep moving. Just jumping out of a freaking hole. Oh, knife man. Oh, knife man. Oh, that was... Was that an extra life that I got there? I'm not sure. More arrows. Another L. Can I get double L? Doesn't seem like it. All right. Mortar man. I feel like that's the if you're if you're making a commando style uh, video game there in, in the eighties. You said like oh, we need a guy with a mortar. I feel like they all... I don't think I knew what a mortar was until I saw it in video games. Either that or G.I. Joe. Who was the, there was a mortar guy in G.I. Joe.
All right, let's get that hot ass. Ah, edit. Imagine if this game had multiple grenade uh, destruction patterns, how hard it would be. I mean, it's not I, already. I'm not sitting here th thinking it's uh, super easy, but um, if they could. If, if the grenades could explode multiple ways, we'd truly be effed. All right, here we go. But yeah, uh, you can play this game two players simultaneously, um, which is another uh, key key thing there. I, you know, being an only child, I didn't really ever do that. Um, but that puts it closer in league with something like an Akari Warriors as opposed to Commando. Since it did have that co-op element. Oh, oh, okay. We're good. Oh, I missed. I don't have good arrows, explosions anymore. There, got it. Pretty sure when you blow that, yeah, when you blow, it up, blow that up, it makes them stop coming, which is nice. Now here's Rambo and he has a gun. Rambo is weird. Uh, you, ever, I don't, you ever think about Rambo? <laughs> it's something I, I find myself kind of thinking about more and more. Uh, oh, man. Maybe not more. Maybe. Oh, geez. Okay. We're getting sloppy now. Oh, Rambo. Rambo. Rambo asking, do we get to win this time? And I'm like, not if you keep catching bullets like that. Rambo. John. Rambo's, so anyway, what I was saying, Rambo is crazy because of, it, it was one of those um, film properties that was not really meant for children that eventually became a cartoon. And this is something that happened time and time again through this era. I mean, look at, the, you know, here we are. We've got these Rambo video games uh, at a time when, you know, I think video games were definitely thought of as more of a children's pastime. This is pre-rating system, all that other stuff. So, um, but also there's that cartoon Rambo and the forces of freedom and and they, I think they did action figures off of that as well. And like, you know, obviously like, you know, I saw Rambo, you know, when it came out in what, 85, 86, I was like 10 or 11 or something seeing Rambo. and die hard and you know like a a wide swath of films uh r-rated movies you know the call it the latchkey kid era or whatever like you get home and hbo is there and you're like did you know that there's full frontal nudity in revenge of the nerds and you're like well we're watching that i feel like that was a respectable uh a respectable rambo run there I wonder if there's a way to continue in this. It seems like a game that would have some kind of continue cheat code somewhere. Um, well, why don't we check out... So I'll show you the Japanese version real quick here as well. The old Mark III. Where are you? Hello, video game. There it is. So different title screen music. It doesn't have the Rambo theme here on this screen. We're playing as armed Buddhist monks. And the color of the bullets is different for whatever reason. But otherwise, relatively similar. I imagine the end of level 
graphic is pretty different because it's not going to have Rambo in it, right? Um, these guys are just going for it. I like it. Uh, but they're getting mowed down, though. I mean, you can see how this game would pretty readily adapt to being a Rambo game since, like, kind of Rambo's thing was I've got a bow with explosive arrows and also I have guns, you know? Like, it's a pretty direct... Oh, jeez. Uh, and then the game also came out in Europe, I believe, under the name, like, Secret Command or Secret Commando. And that was just the Rambo uh, version of the game with the sprites and such, uh, but without the Rambo branding. Yeah, I, 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 Ram so yeah, I think the other difference is, yeah, see, I can... Well, let's just go right through them. That's annoying. I, I see why whoever, you know, like some producer on the U.S. side was like, hey, that's total bunk. <laughs> we need to take that out. Also, can we make these bullets stand out from the background just a little bit better? Can we can we improve that contrast as well? Oh, man. Well, whatever. I got an L, so that's I want an L. I kind of want to finish the first level just to see what the end of level graphic is. Ooh, ooh. Okay, rescue this guy. I think the other thing is I need to remember, and this is this goes for every video game ever made. I need to... Oh, man. I need to remember to use the arrows. You got them. Might as well use them. Okay. Oh, man. There's a tank up here? So this game is just, like, harder across the board then, huh? Uh, and it does, you know, yeah, when looking back on it now, I, you know, obviously, like, you you see the, hey, games like Commando and Akari Warriors exist and all that sort of stuff. But looking at how, like, these levels end just like the Commando levels and stuff, it, it's very much like, okay, yeah, you, you really, you really did just kind of make a Commando. Uh, let's get out of here. But still a film strip. Still a movie motif. That's interesting. I might have thought that they just went with something and, and, you know, would have gone with something a little... Just here's a picture. But no, they're still doing the... The film thing. Oh, the bullets are a different color here, too. Than they were on the first level. They just, like, make different use of the palette. When they brought it over to make sure they always had white reserved for both. I don't ask me anything about how the master system works. All I know is it had a pause button that was up on the console itself. So you had to get up if you wanted to pause it. And then some games would have a status screen on the pause button. And that meant you had to be near the console to see that shit. It's like, what? Mistakes were made. Okay. But yeah, it's weird to think about, you know, this is the whole um, Rambo for kids <laughs> sort of thing. And and also, you know, this is not the only Rambo. Oh, jeez. Knife Man. I, it's weird. You know, so I was never, I, I don't know that I would call myself like some giant Rambo fan. I remember seeing this movie, First Blood Part 2, uh, first, you know, because... 
because it was significantly more popular and more mainstream than First Blood was. And being like, hell yeah! He gave it to those... guys. I was going to say those Russians, but I guess that's Rambo 3, right? Um... Oh, ugh. damn it! Not Rambo. But yeah, the the Rambo was everywhere. Rambo was just everywhere in in that time. As like you know, it was like politicians were talking about like being compared to Rambo, like uh, Ronald Reagan. Is, like I, I feel like there's that's the he's just part of that like '80s pantheon. That when you look at it now and break it down, you're like, geez. We are like, oh yeah, Reagan and, and Rambo and Robocop and uh, all this other stuff. The, the, the long list of things that you kind of look back on now and like, yeah. Kind of, yeah, I kind of, I kind of fuck, I kind of fuck, I kind of fuck all that, but not all, and I don't know. Rambo's a quality film. I, I watched, I went back and watched this movie, I don't know, a year ago and I was like, hey. It's a f it's a fun action movie, you know. I'll take Cobra. I'll take Commando over Rambo for sure. I'll take either of those two over Rambo, but but Rambo: First Blood Part Two is is totally okay, uh, you know, as a as a movie. And the there and then the whole like cultural icon that it became. It's like, is Rambo just the new version of the American flag or whatever, you know, and the, I wonder how that played around the world. I don't know. Anyway, I don't We could, the politics of Rambo, we can probably save for another time. Uh, but the politics of this game being kick-ass, even though I was not the, the hugest Rambo fan of the world are undeniable. Absolutely. And also, um, not the only Rambo game out there. Like I said, Rambo 3 for the Genesis, I remember being really good, but I have not played it in ages. I'd for completely forgotten about it. There was also a Rambo game for the Commodore 64 that I played a lot of, but never understood what the heck I was supposed to even do. And, you know, maybe we'll check that out someday. I don't know that that's necessarily a Hall of Fame caliber game, if we're being honest. But... Rambo for the C64 is an interesting, weird thing that you look at and go like, this is a mess. <laughs> uh, there, there's other, there's other home computer versions of, of, a, of a Rambo game that are, are totally different too, that I've, I've discovered relatively recently and been like, oh, these are like really interesting kind of action y shootery whatevers. And yeah, I don't know. It's, it's neat to, you, you could probably, one could probably do a deep dive into the Rambo franchise and uncover a lot of really weird things in the eighties. And then it wraps back around to that light gun game that Sega did. And then like the, that was that game. It was, it was like a version of that game that kind of came out on steam and was it like PS4 or something for like a very brief period of time. It's it's not on, you can't buy it on Steam anymore. If you still own Rambo on Steam, it's still there in your library. But I don't think you can buy new copies of Rambo. And that's fine because that game is god awful. Wow. It's super bad. Uh, and that's that's fascinating in its own weird way. I probably played, I, you know, because I, I, when I got the Master System, I became dedicated to getting the value out of it. And so I played a lot, a lot, a lot of Master System without having a lot of Master System games. I probably had no more than 10 or 12 uh, Master System games. And so a game like Rambo, I don't know that I ever finished i don't know that i ever finished it i, I assume it wraps around or maybe it has a, a proper ending we should we should find that out you know throw on some cheats or something one of these days um but yeah i i played a ton of rambo and looking back at it now it seems like a game that was really meant to be played uh with another person and you know i didn't really have that option back then so so I never really experienced the game as a co-op shooter. Um, 
but I'm curious. I wonder if that would be a, a better experience or just kind of a hassle. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, I'm proud to induct Rambo First Blood Part 2, 1986, Sega Master System, into the Jeff Gerstmann Hall of Fame. <laughs> yes, this Hall of Fame caliber game, Rambo, for the Master System. You heard it here first. That's right. Freaking Rambo. Just a fun-ass shooter that I was saddled with and had to play way more of than anyone probably ever should have. But I think that's how a lot of those games went when you were a kid. It wasn't like you damn kids today with your free to play games. And suddenly you've got access to thousands of games all the time. Even if you don't have a lot of money, all those games were 50, 60 bucks somewhere in that range. And whether they were, Games that would take you 45 minutes to finish or 45 hours to finish. Usually the price was still right in that same range. And so you would make some decisions based on box art and maybe a review if you were lucky to see a magazine. I was not really seeing very many magazines in that era. You know, Sega had Sega Visions and I'm sure they loved Rambo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I played a, a whole lot of that game. And I think it's pretty well made for what it is in terms of it being a Commando and Akari Warriors-esque shooter. They do a good job at, at making you m mobile in that game. And the way that you kind of always shoot forward when you, when you back up, I think is a, a good choice at letting you line up shots and, and aim better on a, on a controller with two buttons, you know? Obviously, in this day and age, you would just put like, oh, just aim on the right stick and, you know, you do some kind of dual joystick thing or, you know, you, you could have solved it the Akari Warriors way where they had a twisting joystick, which was weird in arcades and then made the home versions feel very inauthentic to the original. Um, but I think Rambo finds an interesting way to kind of give you that ability to back away from a fight while shooting, which uh, it ends up being weirdly key in, in a way. And it's a, it's a cool addition. So good on them for that one interesting mechanic that I don't know that I've seen anyone else do it quite like that. And again, it's, it's not how you would solve that problem in this day and age, but I'm trying to think like other shooters of the era that did like interesting movement, like aiming mechanics, because you started to have cases where they were bringing dual joystick shooters home, like Robotron and, and eventually smash TV into the nineties and stuff. And then it was like, okay, well, how do you do this on an NES controller? And you, like a claim did stuff where it's like, what, like one button shoots forward, one sh button shoots behind you, I think is what they tried to do. So you could still kind of like back away and shoot, but it was like just, just finding different ways to give you something that tried to approximate that dual joystick controller without having dual joysticks. And a lot of them would then let you well, just hold two controllers and play them that way, which I always thought was madness. But now looking back on it, it's pure genius. <laughs> I mean, you got to you got to do what you got to do uh, to make that stuff work. So you got to kind of figure that out, and and that's kind of cool. Rambo: First Blood Part Two. It's in stores now. It came to the Wii Virtual Console, not under the Rambo name, but under the um, Secret Command or Secret Commando, whatever the European name was. Uh, came out on the Virtual Console. As an, as an import because you know obviously they, they didn't have the Rambo license they couldn't just put it back out as Rambo and uh, yeah so it's an interesting workaround just to get that to to be able to come out again and all that sort of stuff but obviously you know you don't see a ton of re-releases of of Master System games at all really um, these days but certainly not certainly not Rambo so congratulations to Rambo our inaugural inductee into the Jeff Gerstmann Hall of Fame. And congratulations to the masterminds. Thank you for so much for your support of this endeavor, this operation, this crazy pirate ship that we're we're running over here. It means uh it means the world to me uh that you believe in me and and want to support this. And uh if you're uh, and, and so as a result, you're watching this early, but this will eventually be available to everyone. And so if you are everyone, take a look at this list of fine folks. You could be, you could find yourself on this list on the next entry 
of the Jeff Gerstmann Hall of Fame. Your name here at URL below. Head on over to patreon.com slash Jeff Gerstmann. For more details on all of that, you can get on the Discord and get an ad-free podcast and, and all that sort of stuff. Look it up. And thank you so, so much uh, to everyone here. And of course, and of course to our friend, uh, John Rambo. Thank you, John Rambo. Thank you.